he was a very sick man, and um, the fact that he's dead is a really, really good thing. Although he wasn't, um, it wasn't like that he was sentenced to death or anything. He died in hospital. Um, could have been that the people who were supposed to look after him didn't quite look after him properly, but there you go. Uh, the next one was an inspirational novel I read, Ask Me Again, which was a free Kindle inspirational novel. This book frustrated me so much. I It was one of those hour, hour and a half reads from start to finish and then they expect you to buy another book to finish the story. Now, there are lots of books that are series where you read the first book and then there's a second book and a third book that continues the story. But usually the first book and the second book and the third book, they have an end point that makes sense. Like a point where you can take a breath before you go into the next one. A sense of completion of that particular phase of the story. In the case of Ask Me Again, it literally just stops at a point where there is quite a bit of unresolved stuff and you're just like, what? But because it's so short and you, you, and it was so rushed, the way the book was written was so rushed, you don't get enough time to develop any kind of feeling for the characters. Therefore, you don't want to read it. You don't really want to pay the money to buy the next book to find out what happens because you're not invested. There was, I was not invested in these two main characters at all. And, you know, they supposedly had quite tragic lives and how terrible is this and yada, yada, yada. But I was so not invested because the author didn't take enough time to create the characters and make you invested in them. Because she was so rushed to get to the end of this short story to get you to buy the next book. That's how it felt, is that, like, she gave you just a, a taster, hoping that you would like it enough that you would then pay money for the rest of the story. And this is literally a story that short... Like, in terms of, like, Soulmate, it was less than a third of the length of Soulmate. And it just, there wasn't enough time to become invested in the characters. And it wasn't really a fun read or anything like that. And it was kind of like, even though I got it for free, I literally felt like I'd wasted download. Because it was just so not worth the effort to actually read it. I also did not find it inspirational in the slightest. I mean, yes, these people had some bad stuff happening and they were, like, moving on with their lives or, you know, attempting to, I guess. But there wasn't, there wasn't enough emotion, there wasn't enough engagement for it to be inspiring. So, yeah. I don't recommend that particular book. <laughs> and the fifth one was a read a historical fiction and I read Voyage of the Heart. This was an interesting read. This was really, really an interesting read. It is based on uh, a real situation thing that was happening at the end of the war. There were a lot of um, American soldiers who ended up in England and they developed relationships with English women um, and in some cases married them before the end of the war. And so after the war, there was a lot of pressure put on the American government to bring these women over to America so that their husbands could, um, you know, start their lives with them. Um, and so this follows the story of four women who were married to American soldiers during the war and then their journey over to England and what happened to them when they got there, which wasn't necessarily what they thought was going to happen to them. Um, it's, it was. I found it quite interesting. I like historical type fictions. I like things that have got a basis in um, what really actually happened. Um, of course, it was fictionalised. I'm sure the person who wrote it did quite a bit of research to find out some of the situations that these women potentially found themselves in. And not everybody has a happy ending. It doesn't work out well for everybody. And that is always the case. If you 
you know, not everybody's lives pan out the way that you think they're actually going to. So from that point of view, it was actually a really interesting read and I did actually quite enjoy that particular book. And I would consider getting, um, I think I have another book by her in my reading list um, somewhere. Um, I would be interested to read more from her because I did really quite enjoy that particular story. So I picked out five new numbers. It took me ages to find these books. These categories were not easy categories. Um, so I've picked five new books for March um, and four of them happen to be actual hard copy books that are in front of me type things because most of these were ones that required books that weren't newer books. So the thing with getting free books is often they're newer books. So uh, yeah, so the first number I picked is number three, which is a book that you picked because of its cover. Now the book that I'm going to read for this is actually a reread. Um, I've been thinking about rereading this series for a while now. Um, I read it several years ago um, and I really enjoyed it then and I, I kind of I think about it a lot. And I think when you think about a book a lot, you should probably go back and read it again and find out what it was that was so intriguing to you. Um, and this book is the first book in the Witches of Elaine uh, and I, I don't know how she pronounces it. Uh, this is Dragon Claws, written by Kate Forsyth. Um, I'll just you can read that for yourself. Droop. Um, the blurb on the back says, Since the day of reckoning, witches and magic have been outlawed in Alilane. The penalty for practicing witchcraft is death. Raised in the shadow of the peak of Dragonclaw, Isbo the foundling sets out on a perilous quest, carrying the last hopes of the persecuted witches. Meanwhile, her guardian, the wood witch Megan, seeks guidance from the most ancient and dangerous wisdom in the land. There are six books in the series and then there is a follow-on series as well. I've read all of them. I'll probably read all of them again because I really liked it. Um, but the cover of this book is just so gorgeous. The artwork that they've done on these is so gorgeous. So that is the book because of its cover. The second one is a book from a thrift store and for this one I picked Isaac Asmanov's Space Ranger. I picked this up from a thrift store for 30 cents <laughs> many moons ago. Uh, I have read this before but it was such a long time ago I don't even remember what happens in this book. Um, on the back it says the first novel in the extraterrestrial odyssey of David Starr Space Ranger is a story of a cunning and brutal conspiracy by aliens to cripple the economy of Earth. Poisoning from Martian colony and danger of mass panic present a threat to the very fabric of Earth's government. The dark wings of death brush low across our planet. Only the multifaceted talents of Isaac Asmanov could have produced this star-toppling series of David Starr, a series that will open new vistas of pleasure for his legion of admirers. Um, as a sci-fi fantasy fan this kind of stuff is sort of like in my real house and it's also not a very thick book and it probably won't take me very long to read um, although it is quite small print so that is the one from a thrift store a book that came out the year you were born this was almost impossible none of the books that came out the year I was born I own or they are books that are just like Salem's Lot came out the year I was born. I'm not a Stephen King fan, never have been, not a book I'm going to read. Uh, and a lot of the other books that came out in the year I was born, I was born are uh, women's empowerment type of books. Um, and whilst I do have a Jermaine Greer in my cupboard, it is not one of her earlier works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in the end, I picked a book that was published around about the time I was born. Roughly. Um, in fact, this was first published the year uh, was first published the year my partner was born, and then it was published again multiple times. <laughs> this is the Technicolor Time Machine by Harry Harrison. He has a great name. Um, this again is science fiction. I have read this before, but again, I don't remember it particularly well. Uh, this one on the back says. 
L.M. Greenspan, the head of Ailing Climatic Studios, gave producer Barney Hendrickson five days to get a major movie in the can and climatic out of it. Impossible? Not with Professor Hewitt's miraculous presto change your time machine, the answer to a Hollywood producer's prayer. Nipping back to AD 1000 with a whole film crew and two glam stars, Barney sets out to prove that the Vikings discovered America 500 years before Columbus and to film the event in glorious Technicolor. But it's not as easy as it sounds as they realise when history lets them down and their Viking Columbus fails to show up in the new world. Yeah, sounds great. I'm not sure I actually read that one, but it's been in my collection for ages, and I'm pretty sure it's another. It's actually one that my father owned originally. Um, so it's definitely sci-fi, because that's the only kind of thing he used to read. Uh, a book, and uh, the next one was number 73, a book set in Canada. Again, this was really hard at first, um, trying to find the book that was set in Canada. And then I realised that... Uh, Anne of Green Gables is actually set in Canada or on uh, Prince William Sound, I think it is, which is a Canadian province. Close enough. And I happen to pick up a full set of Anne of Green Gables on um, ebook form for less than $2 for the whole series. So I'm not going to read the whole series this month, I'm just going to read the first one. Um, but I thought that was a good deal. <laughs> not going to complain about that. Uh, yeah, so that will be that book. And the last one I picked was number 64, which was a prize winner. And, you know, there's lots of prize winners, uh, books that are prize winners. And I went through, I think it's the Pulitzer was the list that I went through. Um, and way back in 1937, I think it was, this honking great book won a prize. Um... This was gifted to my grandfather for Christmas in 1938. So this is a very uh, you know, early-ish version of it. And um, maybe you know what this is. Um, I have read this before, but not this hard copy version of it. I've read a, a paperback version of it when I was in about year six. No, year eight. I remember I read it in year eight. It was uh, a whole, almost a whole year's worth of reading in one book. Um, <laughs> this is Gone with the Wind. I was looking through the cupboard. Um, I was actually looking for roots because I was pretty sure we had roots in our collection somewhere. Um, and I found Gone with the Wind. And Gone with the Wind won a prize, a writing prize, in 1937. Uh, this is a honking great book. This is... Um, the script is small in it. There are a lot of pages. This is one of those books that has a ridiculous number of pages, like over a thousand pages. Um, it's a long read. It took me a long time the first time I read it. I'm sure it'll take me a long time this time. Uh, but we will see how we go. This might be a holdover in the next month. I'll probably try and read everything else first and then read this one. Um, yeah, so that is my update for the Booksmarts project. As I said, Zilma and the others involved will be linked down below. Make sure you go and check them out, and I will update this next month. If you want to subscribe, click the button down there, leave me a thumbs up if you like these kind of projects, and leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments, and I'll see you in my next video. See ya!